Welcome everybody, my name is Dizzle, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do every single roll from start to finish in the Deepstone Crypt Raid. Let's not waste any time and get started with the guide. If this is your first time raiding in Destiny, then this is the video for you. You start off by loading into the raid with this cool cutscene of all guardians, and then proceed to annihilate all these adds to get through the bunker doors, found in the patrol space on Europa. Once you get through the doors, you can pull out your sparrow and drive to the next location. You will then be stopped by another set of doors, but if you are quick enough, you can phase through it. This is the start of the raid, or what I like to call the Sparrow Race because unfortunately we don't have SRL in Destiny 2. So I forgot to mention, exactly how you do the bug is you step onto your sparrow and go just outside till you see frostbite on your screen. You are then going to park your sparrow right there just by jumping off of it. And then when you are inside the bubble and you see the shelter in place, you are then going to jump back on your sparrow while it is outside of the bubble and you should have the shelter in place while riding your sparrow outside of the bubble. Very simple, just takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. So, luckily for you guys, there is a really helpful bug that makes it so you don't get frostbite. Basically, if you stand outside of the bubble and you reach 10 frostbite, you die. So yeah, you'll, you'll want to learn this bug. Just follow the route that I take and you'll be fine. There are plenty of routes you can take, but I figured this one works best for me. And as you practice more, you'll find your own. You can reach the end and there will be a secret chest waiting for you right before the final door, guarded by the Briggs. Kill them, grab your loot, proceed on to the first encounter. One recommendation that I have is jump into this solo like I am on screen and you can practice yourself so you're not holding anybody back. I did this and it really helped me never fall behind when doing LFG raids, so yeah. Now this is the crypt security. First thing to remember, there are two sides of this room, the light side and the dark side. Pretty straightforward. There are gonna be two roles, operator, which is the red thing you see inside the terminal, and scanner, a yellow buff that an ad drops on dark side. There are multiple ways of doing this, but I'm going to explain in a very easy way that you only need one operator, one scanner, and one extra person to pick up operator later. So first let me explain the room. Light side is where you come in from, so I'm going to start explaining dark side. This room has many pillars, but if you look on screen you only need to pay attention to these four. If you pick up scanner, you will have to see which panels light up underground. From both, from all four pillars, um, this one is going to be number five on the wall, number four is going to be one on the pillar. Moving back over here, you need you will see number three. Number two is just past it. And number one is the closest to the door underground. Think of it in a numerical order, depending on where you start in the room. Then we'll move on to light side, where I will show you. This is number five, number four, number three, number two, and number one. Always remember that number five is the one on the wall. Number four is the one on the pillar. Everything else after that just goes in a straight line. Also remember that it is parallel to dark side. That is gonna be scanner's job to see which of the which two panels light up yellow on each side and then they are going to tell operator. Once operator is done, these giant panels will glow, will open up. And this is gonna be where operator is going to deposit it into the terminal. That extra person is going to pick up operator and then scanner is gonna be deposited in the terminal 
where that person in the basement is going to pick it up and tell you which one to shoot. It can be dark right, it can be light left, light middle, dark middle. The order is always random. There's no way of predicting it. You just got to be semi quick about it. Now I'm going to explain to you exactly what operator does. First off, you're going to pick up operator in the terminal on dark side and your scanner is going to be on dark side with you. They are going to kill the ad that is holding the scanner buff and then they are going to tell you which two panels are lit up on dark side. Next, you are going to shoot the panel on dark side to let them through to light side and you are going to go straight downstairs. Once you are downstairs, you are going to shoot the two panels that the scanner told you to on dark side. And by then, the scanner should have told you which two are lit up on light side. Once all four have been shot, that is when operator is going to go to the terminal and deposit it and be given scanner to read. If you're not quick enough and do not one phase, the person holding operator has to then let the person downstairs out the same way that they came in. But with this method, you shouldn't have a problem with that. You should be a really easy one phase as long as the operator doesn't take too long and as long as everybody does enough damage. The biggest thing you want to remember is to make sure that all the servitors die because that'll be a problem for the people depositing into the terminal. So now I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what a full run of this looks like done flawlessly, one phase and everything. Um, I am currently doing the operator role in this and I have my friend doing scanner, basically which is doing the exact same thing that I explained earlier. All he is doing is telling me which ones to shoot. I go downstairs, I shoot them, and then I pass operator upstairs, the extra person picks it up. The, uh, my friend gives me scanner and then I am reading scanner. Weapons to use during this encounter, grenade launchers work pretty well, as well as Xenophage is the number one thing to use. If you have Xenophage, 100% use that. If you don't have Xenophage, go do the quest to get it. It's very, very easy. And yeah, you, you will ha it'll make it your life so much easier if you use Xenophage. But if you absolutely do not, any grenade launcher should do the trick. Once all six generators are destroyed, you will then have beaten the first encounter and you'll move on to the second. Atrax 1. The boss that gave people a run for their money on day one and really showed people what Bungie is made of when it comes to raid mechanics. We need more encounters like this. First off, if you don't have the Lament Sword, go get it now. What are you doing? But if you have Fallen Guillotine, you'll do just fine. Um, this encounter has multiple ways of doing it, um, like three in space, three in spawn. But I'm going to explain to you the 6-4 method, which personally I think makes the encounter much more fun and much quicker. So it's the same roles as encounter one in the crypt security. There's gonna be one operator and one scanner. The person who is scanner goes upstairs with two other people, or shall I say the elevator. You take the elevator with two other people and the operator stays with two people downstairs. Just kill ads until the, spawn, until the servitors spawn in and then one vandal will spawn downstairs with operator. 
The first priority is to get that secured. Once you have operator, you are then going to shoot the two panels on the elevators so the people downstairs with you can take those. At the same time, scanner is going to be upstairs in space. Once the servitors spawn, the first priority is going to be to secure scanner. The downstairs servitors can die right away. As soon as they spawn in, just kill them as, as long as operator is secured. Make sure to shoot those panels so three elevators end up downstairs so you and the two other people can take them to go to space. Once scanner is secured and operator is upstairs, the three servitors downstairs are dead. You save one servant until all six people are ready upstairs. Once everybody is in space, kill the servitor and the boss damage will start. This will be scanner's job to see which Atrax is glowing yellow. You don't have a lot of time, so try and be quick about your call out. He can be any of the ones in the room and there's no way of predicting it. All six people group up on him and have scanner call three, two, one. All of you swing your sword. If you are a scanner operator, try and back up just before damage phase ends so you don't pick up the purple replication debuff. If done correctly, Atrax will have taken damage, and now scanner and three other people, not operator and the person who picked up the replication, will go downstairs, take the elevators, to quickly do damage on Atrax again. One of the four people that went downstairs are going to have to pick up the replication again, so now there are going to be two replications spawned. Come back upstairs and have Scanner call out where the glowing Atrax is again. Repeat that until Atrax is at 25% health, where all eight Atraxes will spawn in in space, and Scanner will have to see which of the eight glow up. Be quick about this because the timer seems to be not as forgiving as the prior ones. Once that is done, Atrax will be defeated and you can move on. Now I'm going to explain what Operator does. Operator can open the vacuum doors upstairs, but if you do the 6-4 method, you don't even need them. When someone picks up the purple replication, they will be on a timer of 45 seconds. All Operator has to do is shoot them off their heads and the person picks it back up off the ground. The timer will be reset back to 45 seconds, so you never have to do anything with them besides that. If Operator is the one that picks up the, op the replication, do not panic. If you have ricochet rounds, you can shoot at a wall and you can shoot it off your head. Or you can just go to the terminal, deposit Operator for the other person to pick it up and shoot it off your head. And then swap Operator like nothing ever happened. Each time you do damage, a replication will spawn. So worst case scenario, there will be three replication on your teammates and you just have to communicate with them to make sure that the timer doesn't expire very very simple encounter for both scanner and operator i think scanner just has to be a little bit on the quicker side and try and get to the elevators as soon as damage phase is about to end just so he can be quick on his call out besides that atrax is a really fun encounter and really tests mechanics i really love this and i think if you learn the 6-4 method, it is going to make the encounter so much quicker and so much more fun that with any LFG raid, this encounter will be extremely easy.
that is what it looked like defeating Atrax and now you're able to move on to the jumping puzzle of the raid. And boy is this an amazing jumping puzzle. Now this isn't just a jumping puzzle, but it has probably one of the best musical tracks ever put into Destiny. I personally usually don't play on with music, but for this encounter, when I first did it, I had my music at maximum volume. It's such a soothing song, and when you're doing the jumping puzzle, it really kind of just sets the mood for what is at what is happening right now. You're jumping in space from platform to platform. It is awesome. Trust me, when you get to this part of the raid, if you don't have your music turned on, please just turn it on for this part just so you can experience that by itself. Now, just follow the route that I take on this jumping puzzle. You really shouldn't have a problem on all three characters. It's extremely easy and honestly probably a really fun, one of the more fun jumping puzzles in a raid. So just enjoy it. And yeah, then we'll get on to the third encounter of the raid. Now that you've been able to take a break from the first two encounters and enjoyed an amazing song and scenery, get ready for a complete mayhem. This is the third encounter of the raid called The Rapture, where you are stopping Europa from getting nuked. It's a very simple encounter. Um, if you want to bring anything that does area of effect damage and something to stop overload champions, you will be totally fine surviving in this encounter. This is going to be very similar to the first two encounters where there is going to be one operator and one scanner, but there is going to be one more role called suppressor, which is blue. First, let me tell you that these roles will spawn on any vandal in the room at random. So first, I'm going to start with scanner. As you remember from the previous encounters, all scanner has to do is just tell everyone basically what is glowing. So, Scanner has a very simple task, and that is just to tell everyone which of the deposits are glowing that are in the middle of the room. The callouts usually go as the two closest to Tanix, the two closest to Spawn, or the two on the right. For whatever reason, they never spawn on both left, so I wouldn't really worry about that one. Now let's talk about Operator. As you have seen before, Operator loves to shoot panels. So, you could have guessed it. He's in charge of shooting more panels. On both sides of the room, there are two panels, so four in total. One on each side of the middle, and two further ones that you will see on screen. When you hear the bell noise, you will look around and see which ones are glowing red, and all you have to do is shoot one panel. Three of the four of them will light up, and once that is done, two nuclear cores will spawn in. Lastly, we're going to be talking about Suppressor, one that we have not seen before and probably the most important role of this encounter. All Suppressor has to do is go through three different spots in the room and shoot at Tanix with one bullet. As you can see on screen, when I do Suppressor, I like to start off on either the top right or the left side. As soon as I hear the bell noise, I will look at Tanix and start my duty. You will want to make sure that you are standing underneath these beach ball looking things and that Tanix is glowing blue. 
Once you see that Tanix is glowing blue, you will shoot him one time and move to each of the three spots. It doesn't matter which order you do. You can start in the middle, start at the left, start at the right. It does not matter as long as you go through all three spots. Once all three spots are done, he will be stunned. And you have to be semi-quick because if Tanix is not stunned, then the bombs can't be deposited. And as I will explain in a little bit, the bombs are on a 10 second timer. If your teammates aren't alternating the bombs in those 10 seconds and he isn't stunned in time, then you will start losing teammates. It starts getting cluttered. So it really depends on suppressor being on time. Now that you know how all three rolls work, all you have to do is deposit two balls six times. Each time a set of nukes are deposited, a random roll will get a deactivated augment, so you will have to deposit it into the terminal for someone else to pick up. Usually, it's better to pick two people for each roll to make sure everything is coordinated. And like I said before, if you pick up a nuke, you get a debuff called radiation. If it goes up to 10, you will die. So make sure you keep track of it and tell your teammates to take it from you if it gets high. The best way to do this is just pick up a roll, do it, switch off with your other partner if your roll gets deactivated. If not, you can keep doing as you are. Just keep clearing ads, making sure that your roll gets done. Same thing for everybody else. And this encounter will go very smoothly. It's very hard to die here. Just use AOE supers, use a sword, make sure you have um, overload rounds on your AR or thermal grenade to get those champions stunned and you will have no problem whatsoever in this encounter. So what you're seeing on screen is me doing the out of bounce glitch just to get a little visual view of Europa as this encounter is coming to an end. There's no downside to doing this. It doesn't, you don't lose your loot or anything. Usually what you would just do is go where my teammates are. You just go to the middle, drop down, go down the hallway and then the encounter is over. You'll see once I get to the end that I end up where my teammates are anyways, just right outside, but I get an awesome view with it. And so once then, once this encounter is done and the dropship drops back down to Europa, we are going to fight Tanix, the Abomination. So Tanix is actually a very simple boss fight that has the same roles as the previous encounter. I'm going to be teaching you guys the four core strategy so you don't even need to worry about scanner. The room is set up in three different areas. Spawn side, which is the side that looks white. Blue side, which is directly across from white side. Orange side, which is to the right of spawn. Operator is going to always spawn on white side. Scanner will always spawn at blue, and Suppressor will always spawn at orange. So if you know that your Operator, stay at spawn side. If you know your Suppressor, stay on orange side. Scanner doesn't really matter, just pick it up for no reason, just to have it. Next is the layout of the map. So on spawn side, or white side, there are two pillars. Each pillar has a deposit for the nukes. The one on the left is one and the one on the right is two. If you make your way to blue side, the one on the left is three, the one on the right is four. Same thing when you go to orange, the one on the left is five, and the one on the right is six. Keep this layout in mind when you get to this point, and you will be golden. Tanix will go to one of the three sides, and this is why you don't need scanner. Depending on whatever side he goes to, you will not need to, to deposit the nukes on that side so for example in our run he goes to spawn side so we know that the bombs will be deposited at three and four on blue and five and six on orange once all four bombs have been deposited tanix will go into the middle and you will start damage phase this is where you're going to want at least one person on divinity and two slug shotguns with auto loading xenophage also does really well if you don't have shotguns if somebody's already on Well of Radiance and you're a Warlock, you can go on Nova Bomb for that extra damage. Also, Rapid Fire Snipers with Triple Tap or 4 times the Charm is really good for damage. There are a lot of videos on people using Double Slug Shotguns for damage, and that's usually what I will use. 
but I was stuck doing Operator, so I was using Divinity. I'll explain what Operator does first. Once Tanix goes to one of the three sides and all four bombs have been dropped, one person holding the bombs is going to be captured in a bubble. All you have to do is shoot the bubble to free them. The only thing the suppressor is doing is doing the exact same thing as the previous encounter. He's running under the three beach ball looking things and shooting at Tanix to make sure he's stunned. You don't want to go too fast here because you run the risk of getting augment lockout on operator and usually that will wipe your wipe the person that gets captured so you kind of want to wait a little bit until the second person gets bubbled and then you will want to finish the stun so if you don't one phase tanix like we did in this encounter you will want to rinse and repeat to get to his health bar to 25 percent he will start to teleport to one of the three sides he will teleport a total of five times until he self until he self-destructs and wipes your team that last bit of health is not so much so just do what you've been doing and you'll be fine. And there you have it. You just beat the Deepstone Crypt Raid and defeated Tanix, the Abomination. If you're wondering why there are two chests that spawned for me, that is because the week that I recorded this video, Tanix was the challenge where you just had to do the four core strategy. So basically, it's a free chest. If you grabbed both secret chests, you will have a total of 20 spoils. And at the end of the raid, you will be able to buy any loot that you have already acquired from the raid at the cost of your spoils. So keep doing the raid and you can earn more spoils to farm for that crispy looking raid loot. As well as some amazing god rolls because the shotgun and the LMG as well as the sniper have really good rolls. The trusty is also a really good scout rifle and the posterity is a decent hand cannon. 180s aren't my thing but some people do like them. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope this video was helpful and helped you guys get a clear of the Deepstone Crypt Raid. If you want to see more videos from me, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It's free. And leave a like if you want to see more guide videos. I also stream over on Twitch doing random stuff. So if you want to check me out, it's twitch.tv forward slash Dizzle. As well as all my other socials in the description. Well, that's going to be enough plug-in for me. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.